All right, let's get started. I'm Tina Zion, and I am a um, fourth generation psychic. Um, I'm a registered nurse. I'm also a Gestalt trained counselor. Uh, my office is in Fort Wayne, Indiana, so just about three hours from here. And I am a medical intuitive. And how that started. It really started spontaneously in the early to mid-1990s that I was asked um, during a woman's conference to work on this woman. She was really struggling. I put my hands on her, and I had been doing Reiki for a long, long, long time. Instantly, I, s I began to see inside of that woman's lungs and I'm telling you, it looked like an x-ray machine, what I was seeing. And because the, the lungs are uh, full of like little sacks that look like bunches of grapes, I was seeing those. I was startled. It just startled me. I told her what side of her lung uh, she was struggling with the most. I told her what it looked like. She agreed with all of that. And I said, how long have you been smoking? And she hugged, ah, oh, she laughed. And she said, well, I'm going to quit soon. Um, and it just happened just like that. The next person that it happened with was, I think the next person that I worked on, oh, like a week later. And I had no intentions of doing medical intuition. And suddenly, I was going up inside of this woman's colon, just like I was uh, in like a little jet plane or a little Star Wars, you know, spaceship. And I was moving up her colon, the colon comes up here, and then I, I turned and went along here and then went down here a little bit. And there was a mass of polyps. And what it um, looked like, I could see it, I could feel it, and I told her exactly where it was, although I did not diagnose because we, unless there's any medical doctors in here, we can't diagnose. But boy, we can describe in minute detail what we get. I described to this woman where it was, and I also, and I'll show you some pictures. When I have people in my office, I actually draw pictures of what I'm perceiving, what I get, and that kind of thing. And she, bless her heart, she was a retired uh, Catholic nun. She took that to her doctor, which I, to that, at that time, I didn't know anyone that took any of my pictures to their doctors. She's laughing back there. Um, and I told her, insist on a colonoscopy, not a sigmoidoscopy, because a sigmoid only goes right here. I asked for the whole, for her to get that. He found a group of polyps. They were cancerous, and they removed them. And she is still doing well. She's 88 now, I think, and still doing great. And um, they removed them. So this is very, very, very real. We are actually wired to do this. If you are in this room right now, medical intuition is speaking to you somehow. You're noticing something because I guarantee that most of the people in this room have actually, they're already picking things up. I had people at my booth already this morning. She says, I just walk around in the shopping center or the grocery and she said I just have a sense that somebody has diabetes that I walked by and she told me how she knew that her brother-in-law was a, about to have a stroke she said the word stroke just came in um, so we are absolutely wired to do this and notice what's brought you to this particular talk because you are also very spontaneously getting this information. This isn't just about me doing it. This is about we have this ability and it's simply, I always tell people, it's simply a matter of beginning to notice these things in a different way. To give them some honor, to give them some credit. And the more you do that, the, the, the stronger this will get. Now, I like to tell people that, you know, our heads are connected to our bodies. We're actually one unit, but especially in our society, 
we kind of forget. We kind of get a lot of accolades. We get a lot of credit for our thinking ability and things like that. But we're really one unit. What goes on in our thoughts creates emotion and it creates something in our physical body because what happens in our heads has to also happen in our physical body. So one of the things I like to ask everybody to do when I give these talks is, and you, you don't need to say what it is, but how many has had a worry thought this morning? Took you a while to admit it, but there you are. Okay. Now, let's say you had that, that same worry thought ten times on the way here. Okay? Every time you had that worry thought, worry has a, a thicker, denser, heavier vibration than what joy does. Joy is light and alive and very fine, where worry is more sluggish, slower. Every time you had that worry thought, and especially if you tend to have the same worry thought, that re repetition gives it density. See, it gets a little thicker, it gets a little heavier. Um, the electrical energy, the electrical vibration creates um, or uh, congeals, gets a more, um, what I want to say, almost like gel gelatinous. And it will eventually end up uh, physical, in a physical nature. Now, on the same hand, yeah, come on in. On the same note, how many people woke up this morning and felt some love of life? Oh, goodness. Well, good, we've got hands for that, too. That affected, that thought form affected your physical body, too, in a lighter, healthier, more wonderful way. I even just got a rush of goosebumps when some of you raised your hands just then because we're one unit and we're very very electrical in nature so every single thought every single emotion that we have ever had is actually in our electrical energetic form a lot of people call it our aura in my opinion, our aura for, is there anybody that does readily see auras in here? Do you have some aura people? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got some. My sense of that is that the aura is really our soul energy. And our soul is bigger than our physical body. It can't remain down under our skin. That it, it emanates, it radiates, it vibrates. And if you think about it, if every thought that we have always thought, <clears throat> every emotion that we have had still stays with us, it's still an energetic vibration, that it's right there with us. It's, it's part of who we are. It becomes part of our electrical nature of who we are as a soul. So the next thing I ask you to do is sit there and just notice yourself more as a soul, not what you have on, um, you know, not what your thoughts are, but the electrical aliveness that is our soul. And if you want, please notice that the soul of who you are, the eternal forever who you are, is not down underneath your skin. It, it's filling this room right now. I got another wave of goosebumps. It's filling this room right now. A lot of this electrical energy also lingers. So people who have also been in this room at other times, other um, reasons for being in this room, you know, there's 
there's some of that energy. As we sit here in this room together, we are also every minute of our history. So if you think about it, five minutes ago was our history. Five years ago was our history. If we truly, really are eternal, 500 years ago was our history. And it's still a part, it's still a portion of our soul, of our soul's awareness. When you notice your electrical nature, and it is indeed we're filling this room, this room is also full of our wisdom as individuals. And if you could just look at the air, you know, without seeing the stuff behind me, just look and get a sense of the air around us. It has our cell phone signals coming in, you know, that has that vibration. That's why our cell phones ring. It has that vibration, but it has the vibration of the cosmos in the air. The air is not empty and the air is not just uh, filled with oxygen, the air is filled with electrical vibratory information. So intuition is literally receiving the information. It's like plucking it out of the air because it's rich around us. We're breathing in information. Intuition is simply information. That's what it is. And we are actually wired. When I said a little bit ago, we are wired to do this. Our brains are, and our nervous system is a system to receive and to send. So we're sending out all kind of information, but we're also receiving all kinds of information. We simply ignore it, deny it, blow it off. Whatever, whatever we tend to do, um, not believe it, all kinds of stuff we do with it when really we're, we're, we're inhaling it in every moment of our day. Now how medical intuition comes in is the, in our psychic intuitive ability, um, you know, say I'm working with this woman right here. I will pick up information, just kind of some general information about her. But medical intuition is entering into the entire story. If I was working with her, I would be entering even more into her entire story as a very unique individual. Her story was five minutes ago. Her story is right now. Her story was 500 years ago, 5,000 years ago. Her story is also her future potentials. It's all vibrating inside of each one of us. So I really, really, really emphasize with intuitive work for other people but, and, and also medical intuition this is a profound thing that we need to be very, very respectful of because when we start picking up what's going on inside of our physical body too, you know, I was zooming up that woman's colon. Usually people laugh, but you all look kind of stunned. But I was inside of that woman's colon. Now think about it. I get inside and look inside. It's not the, the whole of me. My sensors are down inside. I'll look inside of a heart valve and see what's going on. I'll look inside of their pancreas. I will look up and down their spine and see which vertebrae isn't quite in alignment. This is very, very, very powerful. And the only reason I am very, very accurate is I do it every single day. Every single day. And looking at one of the ladies here in the audience, I want to also add that 
it's the same process for animals. It's the same process for animals because our animals are right there for us and their information is also vibrating on a physical level, vibrating on a soul level, vibrating in their aura. Uh, it's information that is actually right there. It's right there for them. Now I want to show you, I want to give you some examples. I'll show you this one. And these are, these are real people. And if you're in my office, I, I draw a picture and I actually write all these things all around. And this person, for example, uh, had a, a great deal of blue and purple from the third eye. And very open, um, those particular colors, as, uh, blue is conversation connecting with the higher source, with God. Uh, most people know about the third eye for uh, open to um, higher wisdom. Her neck and, sh and left shoulder was a mess. Shouldering burdens. She was shouldering burdens. Now, she didn't tell me a thing. I don't want to know a thing before I work with people because it kind of gets in the way. I want to see what's going on in their energy field first. But a heart full of love, and I knew she was doing her healing work because there was a little edge of anger but it was on the way out. Uh, she had some hip struggles. Uh, she had a struggle with her first chakra. I like to bring this person up because when I got down here to her um, lower legs and feet, I saw because um, spirit, I'll pass them around, spirit speaks in symbols too. And I told her, I said, it's like you have um, iron chains around your ankles and and they're chained together and you know what she said she said I've had seven surgeries on I think it was her right ankle and I said what I'm picking up is this particular past life is also a struggle for you she said she knew exactly what I meant she knew who I was talking about she, she told me what that meant to her. And Spirit just showed me the symbol of her being like a ball and chain. A ball and chain. Here's a person that had a, a block in their thoracic uh, four vertebrae, and which is straight through to her broken heart. And how I saw her, uh, her heart in this particular person it was like a valentine heart and there was a k -k 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 like that through it and she and when I told her that she started crying and she knew exactly what it was she a very 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 constipated and literally that's holding on to old crap it's holding on to old crap that made you giggle so I, I want to pass these around just to give you an idea This person was just going to town here. Unconditional love. I mean, it was like, whoa, all over the place. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, very creative and good in relationships. I got to her stomach, and it was like, like this. So she was holding her anger. And these are ones that people said, oh, yes, this makes all kinds of sense. This is exactly what's right. Um, and look how dark and muddier that was. One woman, I don't have uh, her particular drawing, but she still to this day has the most stunningly beautiful energy that I have ever seen with anyone. It was glistening, it's like sparkling, neon lights going all over the place. She was beautiful. I got to her liver and I'd already been seeing all this beautiful stuff. Her liver was dark. It wasn't moving. There was no energy in it. it. And I said, what is going on with your liver? I'd already described how beautiful her energy field was. What's going on with your liver? She said, my father is dying of liver cancer right this minute. 
you know, he was in his process, and she said, I would take it on for him if I could. I said, you are taking it on for him. And I said, let that man have his own path, let him have his own life, let him do what he needs to do because you are taking, literally she was taking his liver cancer on in some energetic way. So, you know, this stuff is very, very, very powerful. Here's one that, and this is a real person that came to me. If you can see that, tell me, kind of just call out and tell me what, what you think about this one. I didn't know her at all. Hadn't seen her before she walked in. Can, it, can you see it back there? I can come back here a little bit. See how... She literally had this gray, multi-layered film around her, and all of these dark spots were tunnels that I could see down inside of her. Those tunnels looked like um, rotten, raw meat. And I could see, I know, and I could see way down inside of them. And it was very startling. I'd never seen this before. And what I said to her was, how much street drugs are you doing? She said, I'm doing a lot of cocaine. I'm a school teacher. I've lost my job at school. Um, my husband has kicked me out of the house. I'm not allowed to see my kids. And I'm living in a motel room with three or four other men who were also drugging with her. And I said, you are going to die. You're near death. And she said, well, I thought so. She knew it. She knew it. So that's kind of making a, a very long story short. But see, I didn't know her at all. And she actually didn't look physically when we looked. I looked at her, you know, just like we're looking at each other here. She didn't actually look horrible. But when I started to look in as a medical intuitive, so I started picking up more of the whole story, more of her whole story. Um, and that's what uh, came about.